Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our physiology playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about the difference between cholinergic and adrenergic fibers. Today, let's compare between acetylcholine and norepinephrine. With that said, now let's get started. Before we get started, let me answer the question of the previous video. Which of the following is true about norepinephrine? Is it A? It's the main hormone secreted by the adrenal medulla. Shut up! The main hormone of the adrenal medulla is epinephrine or adrenaline, not norepinephrine. By the way, why do we call it norepinephrine? Because like neither nor, it's neither epinephrine nor epinephrine. It's like nor, ha <laughs> ha. It's not epinephrine. B. It is stored in clear vesicles. No. Acetylcholine is stored in clear vesicles. But norepinephrine is not. Norepinephrine is stored in granular vesicles. And they have a protein called granin. C. Norepinephrine is metabolized by phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. No. This is the good enzyme that converts norepinephrine to epinephrine. If you're talking about the one that degrades norepinephrine, this is called COMT. O, catecholamine O, methyltransferase. O means zero. We put the methyl group in the zero position to convert norepi or epi into pieces of trash. But if you put the methyl group in the N or normal position, you actually convert norepinephrine, which is valuable, into something even more valuable called epinephrine. So it really depends on where you put the methyl group. N position, good stuff. O position, trash. Something your professor will never tell you. D. The main mechanism of its removal from the synaptic cleft is active reuptake by the axon terminus. This sounds like a good idea. How about E? It's released by preganglionic sympathetic. No, 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 no. Any preganglionic fibers releases acetylcholine and not norepinephrine. So the answer here is D, as in doofus. Sympathetic nervous system is when you're running from a tiger. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. Read, eat, cry, and take a dump. Parasympathetic is also secretomotor. Sympathetic is thoracolumbar. Parasympathetic is craniosacral. And we have talked about the locations of the ganglia before in this playlist called Physiology. Types of fibers. Central fibers, I mean before the ganglia and peripheral fibers, which are postganglia. Tell me about central. See this? Yeah, it's trying to talk to a skeletal muscle. Oh, it's cholinergic because it secretes acetylcholine. What's the receptor? N sub M. N means nicotinic. M means it's a muscle. I mean a skeletal muscle. How about preganglionic fibers, whether they are parasympathetic or sympathetic? They always secrete acetylcholine. If it's preganglionic, it's acetylcholine, therefore cholinergic. Rene Descartes said, Cosito ergo sum. I doubt, therefore I am. But Medicosis said, I'm preganglionic, therefore I'm cholinergic. Ha ha. And let me tell you a joke. René Descartes walks into a bar and orders a drink. When he finishes his drink, the bartender asks him if he would like another drink. Descartes replied, no, I think not. And then he disappeared. That's the joke. It's not funny, I did not laugh. No, he did not understand it. He doubted his own existence, therefore he disappeared. Enough with these dad jokes. If I'm postganglionic, however, it depends. If I'm parasympathetic, I'll secrete acetylcholine, I'm cholinergic. But if I am sympathetic, I'll secrete norepinephrine. Therefore, I'm adrenergic because this is known as noradrenaline, adrenergic. The receptor that's waiting for the acetylcholine in the postsynaptic is M1, M2, M3, M4, or M5. They are muscarinic receptors. But the ones that are waiting for norepinephrine, these are adrenergic receptors, such as alpha or beta. How about the receptors waiting for the acetylcholine on the ganglion? I mean preganglionic, this is N sub N. The receptor waiting for the acetylcholine on the skeletal muscle is called N sub M. M for a muscle, N for a neuron, because this is a start of a new neuron. Your adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion, therefore just treat it as if it's a ganglion. Sure, so what's here? Preganglionic will secrete acetylcholine always. And then post, oh, there is no postganglionic here. It will just release epi and norepi into the blood. There is no postganglionic nerve fiber here. There is a Catholic marriage between parasympathetic and acetylcholine. Whenever you see parasympathetic, you'll always see acetylcholine being released because para is always faithful to acetylcholine. Para never knew anyone else. When I say parasympathetic fiber, you say it's gonna release acetylcholine, therefore it is cholinergic. However, 
Acetylcholine is a cheating SOB. It has cheated on the parasympathetic nervous system thrice. Once at the somatic fibers, these are not parasympathetic, yet they still release acetylcholine. Preganglionic sympathetic, these are not parasympathetic, yet they still release acetylcholine. And postganglionic sympathetic to sweat glands, these are not parasympathetic, yet they secrete acetylcholine. You might ask, hey, medicosis, I don't understand. Why did the sympathetic disobey the rule? And because the rule said if you are postganglionic sympathetic, you should secrete norepinephrine. Why did the sympathetic secrete acetylcholine on sweat glands? Because let me remind you, the definition of parasympathetic is secreto motor. Secreto. Acetylcholine is the hero of secretions. If you want to secrete sweat, which is a secretion, you better go with acetylcholine. It's way better at secretions than the doozy, nor epi. If the fiber is called cholinergic, it secretes acetylcholine. And then acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft has three choices. It can act on N sub N in ganglia and in your adrenal medulla. It can act on N sub M and the neuromuscular junction for skeletal muscles. This is voluntary. Or it can act on muscarinic receptors on smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. These are involuntary. This was the story of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, not to be confused with your intergluteal cleft. Not all clefts are created equal. Some are macroscopic, some are microscopic. Adrenergic fibers, they release noradrenaline or norepinephrine. Adrenergic fibers will never release epinephrine. Why not? Because they lack the enzyme known as PNMT, phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase, which was in that multiple choice question in the beginning of the lecture, and we have talked about this, this doozy enzyme in previous videos. Norepinephrine is in the synaptic cleft. I have choices. I can act on alpha receptors or on beta receptors. Let me relax the wall and contract the sphincter, including your internal sphincter, which could be found inside your intergluteal cleft. Enough of these dead jokes. Let's compare between acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Acetylcholine! If a fiber secretes acetylcholine, it's cholinergic by definition. Then acetylcholine has three choices. N sub N receptor, N sub M receptor, or M receptor. How about norepinephrine? Norepinephrine being released from sympathetic adrenergic fibers. We have two choices, alpha receptors or beta receptors. Synthesis. Acetylcholine is made in the axon terminus from acetyl-CoA and choline. Acetyl-choline. No kidding. And you have choline acetyltransferase. Next, norepinephrine. If you are an axon terminus, phenylalanine, tyrosine, dope, dopamine, norepinephrine, and stop. This is how norepinephrine is made. Why stop? Why not continue to epinephrine? Because the axon terminus does not have the enzyme necessary for converting norepinephrine to epinephrine. What's the name of the enzyme? It's called phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. Phenylethanolamine, because we started with phenylalanine. N, because we put the methyl group in the normal position, converting the norepi, which is valuable, into an even more valuable epinephrine. And that's why it's a phenylethanolamine N methyltransferase, because it adds a methyl group onto the norepinephrine, converting it into an epinephrine. So literally, epinephrine is a methylated norepinephrine. This is deep. Deeper than my cleft. Storage. Where do you store acetylcholine? Clear vesicles, but nor epine granular vesicles. They have a granin. Release of acetylcholine. You need action potential. You need calcium influx and you need exocytosis. Same thing with nor epi. Acetylcholine removal. Once acetylcholine has performed its job, we cannot allow it to leak to the bloodstream. If it leaks to the bloodstream, it will lead to dumbbells, diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, sweating, salivation. This is fatal. This is organophosphate poisoning. Do not let the acetylcholine leak to the bloodstream. So how should I prevent it? Destroy it right away. Once it has performed its job, just get rid of the acetylcholine. How do I do this? Acetylcholine is trace. It's gonna help you. And you have two types of this enzyme, true and pseudo. True choline esterase you find it in the axon terminus, but the pseudo with a P you find it in the plasma with a P and hepatocyte with a P. Norepinephrine is different. You can allow it to leak into the bloodstream. It will help you stay alert. Most of it is removed by active reuptake and some of it is destroyed by Mao and Compt. Why do you call it Mao? Monoamine oxidase. Have you noticed these are monoamines and these are amino acids? So it's a monoamine oxidase, it's gonna get rid of them. Or COMT. Catecholamines, these are catecholamines. O, put the methyl group in the zero position, the trash position. 
and literally converts norepinephrine into pieces of trash, what we call inactive metabolites or degradation products. Next, the action of acetylcholine is localized. Oh, sure, it cannot be generalized because we have destroyed it by our choline trace and we did not allow it to leak into the bloodstream. However, norepi is allowed to leak, that's why it's a generalized effect. Where do you see acetylcholine? Central fibers, whether they are somatic or preganglionic, and peripheral fibers when they are postganglionic parasympathetic, all of them, or with the exception, which is sympathetic to the sweat glands. Other than that, sympathetic will secrete norepinephrine. Receptors. Acetylcholine can act on nicotinic receptors or muscarinic receptors. Norepinephrine can act on alpha receptors or beta receptors. What will norepinephrine do? It will perform the sympathetic response, which was discussed in my antecedent videos. What will acetylcholine do? It depends. If you're talking about the preganglionic, it will affect sympathetic or parasympathetic. So acetylcholine could be prosympathetic or pro-parasympathetic if you're talking about preganglionic fibers. Acetylcholine could be pro-skeletal muscle contractions if you're talking about the neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine could be pro-parasympathetic if you're talking about the postganglionic autonomic fibers or the postganglionic parasympathetic. And these functions were discussed in my earlier videos. Now let's take it to the next level, some autonomic pharmacology, please. So you remember this? Yeah, this is N sub M for my skeletal muscle, such as your biceps, your triceps, etc. We can have a drug that will stimulate the N sub M receptor. We call this a nicotinic agonist. Okay. We can have a drug that blocks this receptor. This is a nicotinic antagonist or a neuromuscular blocker, such as any drug that has the word corari in it, such as tubocorarine, mevacurium, atracurium, pancuronium, vicuronium. Perfect. How about these N sub N? They are still nicotinic. Yeah, you can stimulate them by same drug that stimulate the N sub M. Sure, yeah, you mean a nicotinic agonist? That's right. Also, nicotine in a small dose can stimulate these receptors and these receptors. Oh, by the way, that's why we call them nicotinic in the first place. Why did we call them nicotinic? Because in the lab, when you put nicotine on them, they get stimulated. Why did we call these muscarinic receptors? Because if you put some muscarine on top of them, they get stimulated. How do I block these nicotinic receptors? You mean you want to block my ganglia? Sure, give me a ganglionic blocker or a nicotinic antagonist, such as a nicotine in a high dose. So nicotine in a small dose will stimulate the receptor, but nicotine in a high dose will inhibit the receptor. Also tetraethyl ammonium will inhibit these receptors. Now let's go to the periphery. Muscarinic receptors. I can be an agonist, I can be an antagonist. Give me a drug that it's an agonist on M receptors. You have pilocarpine, for example, or you can have the generic acetylcholine. It's the quintessential muscarinic agonist. Give me a muscarinic antagonist or a blocker. You have atropine. It's going to block your muscarinic receptors. Same thing happens to the alpha receptors. You can give me an alpha agonist or an alpha blocker, a beta agonist or a beta blocker. Just remember, beta blockers are drugs that end in olol, such as propranolol, metoprolol, atenolol, etc. Give me an alpha blocker, phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine. Give me an alpha agonist. You have phenylephrine. Give me a beta agonist, you have isoproterenol. And all the drugs that we use in asthma patients, such as albuterol, salbutamol, terbutaline, formoterol, salmoterol. Check out my video on asthma treatment. Also, I have another video called Respiratory Pharmacology in my pulmonology playlist. Remember back when you were young and watching cartoon movies on TV? Yeah, remember when someone get a bow and arrow like this? And then drop the arrow inside something that looks green like this. And then use the arrow to paralyze his or her victim. Yeah, this green stuff is actually Corari. How does it work? It blocks my N sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction, which will lead to neuromuscular blockade hashtag paralysis. Drugs such as these can be used by the anesthesiologist to paralyze your body so that the surgeon can work on your body. Why do you want to paralyze my body? Why not just knock me unconscious and leave me? Because once the surgeon touches your biceps, your biceps going to jerk and contract and ruin the entire surgery. We would like to, one, render you unconscious, and two, paralyze your muscles. 
If you're struggling with autonomic pharmacology, check out my course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 15 videos, 20 cases, and my Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook to equip you with some robust pharmacology knowledge so that you can master it, so that you can help your patients. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my pharmacology courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.